Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Local Chat, episode 175. Sometimes I keep my noise gate a little high because I have a fan in here and I don't want it to bother my guests. Folks, the music is here. The, the times are fun. Joining me this week for the first time, Jake Terrio. Yeah, long-time listener, first-time caller. Very happy to be here. Have you ever listened to an episode of Local Chat that you haven't been on? Uh, I've listened to, I don't know about in its entirety, but I've definitely listened to Chunks if I knew you were talking about a game that I was interested in. Interesting. I was expecting a flat no, and I'm very impressed. Mm. Um, Our other guest, Ian Gibson, has listened to every single episode, even the ones he's not on because we don't air them, right? That's true. He's yeah. There's I, no episodes that Ian's not on. Yeah, that's right. I I proof. I, to be fair, when I'm not here, you guys always record an episode, but I get veto power, so I listen to yeah. it. And <laughs> one has none of them. It's in that contract <laughs> we all signed. <laughs> none of them have made the cut yet. So don't <laughs> worry, folks. You're not missing anything. Oh damn, that's a good joke. I, honestly, it's like a nice bonding activity when I'm not on local chat because. When I'm not here, and I'm not complaining about this, it really is a good thing. When I'm not here, there's like 15 anti-Ian jokes and remarks in the episode, and I'm like, that's okay, blow off your steam. I deserve it. I'll be back next week. It's, it's oh, we gotta let the pressure off a little bit. It's unfortunate you're the fall guy for everything now. It's, uh, it's fine. It, it's I sh- okay, I shit on Nancy Pelosi's <laughs> desk, okay? It was me. I'm the one that did it. Oh, what did I write today? <laughs> Mega Man with Ian is Mega Man with a Maga Man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I may or may not be the Zodiac Killer. Uh... <laughs> Jeez, Mr. Cruz, please. Um, folks, we're here to talk about video games. Before we do that, we have a chit chat section. I didn't have much to chit chat about. I did see an interesting thing on Twitter. Did either of you see the Mario letter thing on Twitter? What is this about? Is this about? Hitler and Waluigi no, that I just saw. No, it is not. <laughs> That's you want, my fan. Do you want to hear that one real quick? Yeah, you tell me about that. <laughs> it was somebody, somebody basically said, I can't believe Hitler had a lieutenant named Himmler. That's some real Waluigi and Luigi shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> that is genuinely very not funny. wrong, I guess. It makes sense. Um, yeah. I, uh, no, this is uh, in the original... F- for two Mario Brothers games, one and then Japanese two, so the lost levels in America, um, they made a font for all the letters in Mario, but there's one letter that is in neither of those games of the 26 letters in the American alphabet. American alphabet. <laughs> yes, it's ours. <laughs> no, yeah, we, yeah, it's ours now. <laughs> it's ours now. Everyone else is to change. Um... <laughs> Uh, do you do you guys want to guess what letter it is? It, it I mean, is from not. you talking about it, I want to say it's M. But but wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm confused because you said there's 26 letters, and this letter is not a, one of the 26 letters. So no, is no, it no, one it of is. the 26 it's, letters or yeah. no? What there's oh, 26 letters in the alphabet. One of them is in the same letter is in neither the first two Mario Brothers games, Super Mario. Brothers. Oh wait, I understand the the brief name. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm gonna say. Bro. I'm gonna say X. X. That's a good guess, Jake. Guess. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of like all the words that would show up. Like, you know, uh, yeah, it's got to be. Uh, yeah, X or. I, I I don't know. I think Ian's on the right track. You think Ian's on the? He's not on the right track. So if you want to guess oh, another no. letter. The only thing I think of was uh, if it's if it's one of if one of the letters in the title is an icon, so like like a power up block, you know, you know what I mean. Oh, I'm gonna say yeah. F. <laughs> it is F. Holy shit! Oh. <laughs> How did wow. I do that? Wow! Did you just Google it really quick? I um, didn't. Yes, it is the letter F. It is those um those fun fact uh, Mario Brothers Twitter channel. Yeah. He posted that. He's like, yeah, here's the design for the letter F. It's in neither of the games, uh, which is kind of wild. And and that's the font for, like, the credits and everything. So, uh-huh. um, no, no Freds. 
who worked on Mario. So if someone named Fred tells you they worked on Mario, they are a complete and utter liar. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about uh, is I recently got some some old cameras from my parents' house, and I one of them takes mini DVs and SD cards, and I had to order two gigabyte SD cards mm-hmm. off of Amazon.com because oh. That's the max. SDHC wasn't invented until 2006. So two gigabytes yeah. is the max. Um, it gives me about two hours of recording time, which is pretty good. Um, and then I also, uh, surprisingly, on both the mini DV and the Hi8 tape camera, both have S video out, uh, which I was not yeah, expecting. That is surprising. And they yeah. both. I was testing them on my board for a while and nothing was working until I finally noticed there's a little switch to switch from composite to uh, S video. So both of those cameras plug, oh. go right through this board, uh, and it looks crazy cool. So I'm going to try to shoot some more stuff with that. But I just thought it was wild in the year of our Lord 2024. I had to buy a two gigabyte SD card, just SD. Uh, how much How much did that cost? It was $8 for two of them. Uh yeah, it's you're you're kind of I, I guess I think with that, you're just passing the threshold where it's no longer cheap because, you know, the technology's advanced and nobody's using it. And now you're getting to the point where it's like, oh, this is becoming rarer so we can start yeah. to charge you more like like for high eight tapes. I think I pay five to eight dollars per two hour tape now for high eight, which is Jeez. a little bit more expensive than they were brand new back in the, in the early mid nineties. Well, know? that was even, uh, you know, 12 or 13 years ago when net devil was working on Lego universe and they had to build like low end machines to make sure that it could play on people's low end machines. And they're like, it's more expensive for us to build one of these <laughs> than yeah. to get like the high grade fancy stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's wild. Yeah, I, it's funny. It's neat. I, I noticed a lot of the reviews people were using them for like old Nikon's and stuff like that, um, like early digital cameras that don't can't mm-hmm. be upgraded. So I'm just surprised I didn't deep deep dive into it. But I guess it's because of the like file architecture. But I'm surprised there's not like a SD converter adapter for like a micro there SD is. card. Oh, is there? Okay. So there is one. I've I've seen it. I've thought about getting it for Pixel 8, but honestly, it's a bit too expensive. I think it's about 150 bucks. And what it is, is it's literally a little tiny box. And what you do is you run a composite cable from the camcorder into the box, and then you put an SD card on the box. And oh, I think there's even a little yeah. screen on the box. So basically, nothing's being recorded on the camcorder. It's just composite or S-video out to the little tiny box, and the little tiny box is constantly recorded okay. onto an yeah, SD card. I, I, I did see that. That's theoretically the exact same thing I can do, but without the little box part of it. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. With, without having to do a computer. And then people yeah. will just like, they'll get like six inch composite cables and then just like duct tape Velcro that to the camcorder, the little box. It's it's a really cool solution because I have problems with tapes. There's a Pixel 8 episode that has a lot of artifacts in it because the tape was just bad and we didn't realize that until we went to, to edit it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's a bit too expensive. It's like 150 yeah yeah well is yours uh i had a sorry i had a jvc camcorder that shot on hi8 an sd card and um it default the default aspect ratio was four three you could change it to 169 but what i discovered was it was just letterboxing four (laughs) three to create 169 i'm like this is useless i'm losing what little data i already have um no, yeah. I don't think it does. So I have two. I, this is uh, for folks at home who are listening. Uh, fuck you. Uh, this is the Canon uh, ZR90, which is the tiny little one. And then the other one is on the floor and I can't reach it. But it is uh, uh, that's the high eight one that is is a lot bigger. And I think it's Sony. Um, and it, that that one only takes high eight. This is mini DV and uh, and uh, SD card. But it's cool. It's got that crazy. 440 times zoom digital zoom so it just like oh, yeah. keeps zooming you're like jesus christ what is happening <laughs> show me the pixels um, make the pixels bigger i'm debating yeah. bringing it to italy and shooting wait hold it up vacation to camera. there uh i'll hold it up to camera uh, i'm oh. shooting this camera with an older camera <laughs> <laughs> that might be the exact same one i had i have to dig it up because if you found a way to 
to give, make it as a webcam. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah, it's pretty great. And and uh, the the best part is um, it records just the LCD screen, so it has all the the recording nice. and doodads and everything, which is going to make it great for when we uh, do Spooky Pixel this year, because. <laughs> I think both cameras have night, night vision as well. Uh, oh, yeah. Which is literally going to be terrifying. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the video corner. Uh, working on that. Uh, and surprisingly, these batteries are still pretty good. Uh, I would charge them up. And I, they're not, like, lasting forever, but it's been at least two hours or something like that. So I'm sorry. Breaking news, folks. I saw your face. Breaking news. Announced eight minutes ago. Nintendo of America has heard our prayers. Mega Man 1 through 5 are now on Nintendo Switch Online. Oh, that's okay. great. <laughs> Perfect. Isn't that crazy? We were just talking about that today. I was just talking about saw, Mega Man today. Uh, yeah, and I saw uh, a rumor like an hour ago, but they just flat out announced it eight minutes ago. Mega Man fuck? 1 through 5. We're six. But I think they're all I think they're all the Game Boy ones, though. Oh, Which, yeah. I wonder if those are Yeah, fuck that, honestly. Different. Fuck that. Um, probably they look like shit <laughs> uh, i was i've been watching uh, uh i've been going through old giant bomb content because it's good to put on when you're trying to do other things um so i've been putting on blue bombin which is alex navarro playing through the Mega Man games and i was like i should play through the Mega Man games and so i started playing one on the miu mini but maybe i'll check what these are like god this box arts are awful they're uh, terrible. They're, I, I would not play it. They're, they're the Game Boy, so they're the monochrome Game Boy ugh. versions. Ugh. Just play the NES ones. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get my Mew Mini out. Sorry, um, I didn't realize they were the bad versions, but yeah, it's weird Jesus. that they announced that I'm gonna the day we've off. been talking about it. Yeah. Uh, this. Also, I'd like to point out should, that... Yeah. What? You want to talk? I was going to say, we got to figure out what, what game we're going to talk about tomorrow in the Discord so that Nintendo will add it to the service tomorrow night. Leisure Suit Lair. Uh, Let's really talk F-Zero. about it. F-Zero. F zero, I feel like one of them is on there. It's, it's no, it's on, that the, one 99. of the old one. online ones. No, I think SNES got added recently too. I well, the say. game um, I want the GameCube one. Yeah, he wants okay, the GameCube fair. one. GX. Uh, I was gonna point out that uh, he self-proclaimed Mega Man fan Zach of Save Data said that Mega Man gets the uh, Charge Buster in three. He actually gets it in four. Um, and I've only played Mega oh, Man sorry. X, and so I'm just like. This guy coming into our sanctuary of subpixel discord probably, he lying. probably doesn't even know ace attorney's real name what a loser <laughs> phoenix right by the way <laughs> oh thank you and judge fat pussy <laughs> 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 i bet he thinks he's a real judge um okay that's enough banter that's 14 minutes of banter fuck you uh folks we're gonna talk about the games we've been playing this week I, uh, I'm sick of talking, so I'll let Jake go for a little bit. Jake, please tell us about the worst game, uh, one of the worst games I've ever played, and one of the best games I've ever played. Um, yeah, so there's been, ever since the Fallout TV show aired, there's been a lot of Fallout chatter in the Subpixel Discord. And so on a whim, you know, scrolling through Game Pass, I was like, oh, Fallout 4, I'm going to give that a shot. And I did. I played it for an hour. I played to the part where you get Give the up. the power armor for the first time, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just not, I'm just yeah, not vibing with it. I forgot about that. You get, they're like, everybody loves the power armor, so let's just give it to you an hour in and build this whole shitty system around it. I'm like, ugh. Yeah, I was not about it. I did not like it. Um, so and yeah, I should... stopped playing Fallout Four. <laughs> It's just wild because I, I'm not to make fun of you, but I understand the fallout itch, but then you picked what pretty much everybody agrees is the worst one to play. <laughs> I've you know, always heard, I've always, I mean, maybe I'm out of the fallout sphere, but I, I've often heard better things about four than three and certainly better than 76. Well, no, oh, 76 yeah, I would has, say certainly better than 76. I, I don't know about that because 76 has turned a corner. There's just a caveat where people say, don't play it multiplayer like play it yeah. solo and start at le level 20 and that's that's gonna be better than fallout 4 marginally I, better than fallout 4 that's as what someone heard. who played about an hour on stream it was multiplayer but i still think four is better than than 76 for that short amount of time i played it felt a lot that's better. fair 
Well, um, maybe I'll have fair. to play an hour of yeah, three. I, I suggest have three. Three is very good. It's not the best. What are we doing? What are we doing here? Jake, have you played New Vegas? Yes, he has yes. played New Vegas. So I already played New Vegas. Just played then just just well, that, I, I <laughs> did consider. I did consider. I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll just do another New Vegas playthrough. Um, but um, I wanted to diversify my palette. Three, three's to, good. To see. Uh, I've been yeah, replaying three's, three's three, good. and it's not. I mean, the problem is, it's just the caliber of writing isn't there, and the like, the, sure. the, the like, the store, the right. like exploration stuff isn't quite there. But it's still good. I like. I really enjoy it, and, and the the DC aspect of it really adds to the the stuff so i liked that in fallout 4 they say war never changes within like three times within the first 30 seconds yeah, it's twice in the opening cutscene, and then immediately after it fades into like the character creation screen God. Uh, skipping ahead a little bit to the news section i don't know if you guys saw but there is a project arroyo <laughs> Whoa. which is a f it's a fan-made fallout 2 first person remake and it was in the news this week because they now have more than 100 developers working on it. Wow. So this shit may be coming out. I don't want to say soon, but soon compared to a lot of fan remakes and fan mods. And yeah, I, I, also, I know there's like Fallout Miami that's being yeah, made. But this is like Fallout 1 and 2. They're 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 completely different from 3, 4, 76, yeah, New Vegas, etc. Symmetric, no? Yeah, mm. and I've tried to play them. It's just not my style of game, but I would love to play. I've heard they're good, so I would love to play through Fallout 2 in that first-person style. So uh, just wait a year, Jake, and that maybe that's the game that, that you should be okay. playing. No, they're all, all going right. to get laid off next month. So it won't be on your It's a fan project, but somehow they got laid off. <laughs> got that's laid the off. industry right now, folks. That's a good hard drive article. I should email them. Um that's that's great um yeah i'm sorry you're not enjoying fallout 4 i you know i don't mind fallout 4 except that it's awful i just the main <laughs> character speaking it just hurts me because a it's not very well done and b sometimes i don't know if they changed it but for a while when it first came out he wouldn't say the exact thing that you clicked on like you mm. were just clicking on the vibes of what he's going to say and sometimes they would say th something in a different way and you're just like no that's not what i meant like uh it's just yeah i'm glad you moved on from four yeah um, i i tried to take a pay i tried to take a page out of the ian gibson handbook of video game enjoyment and i just stopped playing it that's a, it's you know, uh it's, it's honestly idea. it's great i've started doing that with movies and tv shows and folks it's great you don't have to fucking put up with it. If you don't like it, you don't have to finish it. <laughs> um, I will say, if you haven't played The Outer Wilds, Outer Worlds, 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 I still fucking. <laughs> and then which one? Which one has has the? And is it, is it the Outer it's, Wilds and then Outer Worlds? Yeah, or is it the I Outer believe Worlds? So. Yeah, no, it's okay, the Outer Wilds. You should play Outer Worlds. You should play Outer Worlds because that, even though it's short and small, it's it's an Obsidian yeah. Fallout S game, and it's it's pretty good. It's very good. I'll do it. The I will That's also say, Outer Worlds, she yeah, Outer Worlds. Um, the main campaign is kind of lame and not that great. The three DLCs, I don't remember. I remember them all being way better than the main campaign, and one of them is knocks it out of the park. But I don't remember which one. But those yeah. three DLCs, I think I don't think you have to beat the game to do them. Uh, they're great. Uh, they're very very good. So I highly recommend that if you're looking for that obsidian itch, they call it. That's mm -hmm. what the doctor said. Um, what other game? Again. What other game you playing? Um, I after bouncing off of Fallout Four, I was then still perusing through Game Pass, and I'm like, it's been a minute since I've played Wolfenstein. Let's play Wolfenstein again. And so I booted up the new order and um, the game rocks. Just real fun. It actually had, I was noticing on this playthrough, it feels a lot like the Metro games, at least gameplay wise, um, with like the sneaking and the shooting. Um, it has some weird pacing issues. I forgot the fact that it's kind of a loose spinoff from the Raven software 2009 Wolfenstein game, mm -hmm. even though it's made by totally different developers. Yeah, Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Um, or is that a scam? And so, 
you do kind of jump into the story mm-hmm. and just to see, like characters will show up and be like, Oh yeah. Uh, BJ Blaskowitz. Remember when we did this thing? And I'm like, no, I don't <laughs> remember sh- that. Are you, wait, Jake, are you sure? Cause I'm pretty sure there's an entire like prologue sequence where they introduce all these characters in like a D day esque thing. Not all the characters. Some of them, but after you, it's the the first level is the D Day onto Death's Head yeah. compound. But then after that, when you break out of the asylum and you you get back to the Resistance in Berlin, there's like four or five characters there who already know you. And I'm I oh. went and I looked up I looked on the Wolfenstein the 2009 Raven Software wiki, and it's all characters from that game. I just oh. assumed they were characters. And they just, you know, I mean, they just had yeah, established I it was like in media res. In media, in yeah, 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 in media res. But well, I never I think realized it works yeah, in that yeah. way. But. That's great. I didn't realize. Yeah, I didn't realize they went above and beyond that and actually connected yeah. to that other game. That's um, cool. But um, yeah, it's it, it it does feel I think rushed because it is kind of like the second act of a story that I <laughs> that I didn't play the first act of. Um, so it does kind of jump around. I think narratively it I think it could take more time to do what it needs to do but um there's some fun guns in that game that explode some Nazis in really fun ways. Yeah. And you go I, to the moon. Talking about talking about games you finish you drop early. That's one of the few games where the gameplay itself like you like you said it started to feel a little bit rushed and it started to feel a little bit long in the tooth but the the weirdness and the payoffs of the story and the characters kept me going. Like I finished that game because of the story, whereas it's usually the opposite where you're like, I don't care about the story. I want to finish this because of the game. Mm. And I think that really speaks to the strengths of a fucking single player FPS to tell a story like that. Yeah. So I'll definitely, I'm on, I think the last level or the second to last level I'm um, nearing. I just landed at death's heads, death's heads compound for the second time. So, which I think is the last level. And then I'm definitely going to play new Colossus again. And I'm just getting excited for machine games, Indiana Jones. Yeah. I, I've been thinking about will made a face. (laughs) I've been, I've been thinking about playing young blood, which is the co-op, the co-op Wolfenstein game. Cause I never did pick that up. Is that online co-op? Maybe Assume we so. can find out because I'd we, play that with somebody. It's got to be online co-op. Uh, yeah, pick me. I'll be on team. I'm the better sister. Um, <laughs> there that zombie DLC. What's the like side game? The new blood. Is that the new blood? That was pretty fun. Oh. I remember that being pretty fun. Left for dead. Um, <laughs> Redfall. Uh, I know. I think it is the old blood. I think you're right. The old blood. Yeah. The new blood. I remember that being pretty. No, the old blood. Yeah, the, the old, old blood, blood yeah. is a zombie one. And they, like, fall out of a yeah. Zeppelin. You're, like, in that little Nazi town. German town. Sorry, German. <laughs> so there's Nazis there, the, too. The naming, if I can go on a tangent real quick, the naming convention reminds me of electrical supplies that you have to buy for your house. And the reason why is there's a difference between buying an electrical box for a house that is being built because the drywall's not up and the studs are all exposed, and the electrical box that you buy when the drywall is already up and you're adding a new one. Like it's literally different um, because of how you install it. And the way they, they call it is old work and new work. Mm. And so, <laughs> so if it's a brand new house, I believe it's called new work. And if it's a, if it's a house that you're adding one to, then I think it's called old work, but it's confusing enough that every time I have to buy electrical stuff, I have to look it up and be like old work versus new work. And it's just, and that's the same thing with fucking old blood, new blood, or whatever, like young blood. It's too confusing. Uh, uh, there's other examples of this, but the only one I can think of is because I do this all the time. Similarly, every single time I go to change the restream for Fire Emblem, I have to look up if I'm playing Blazing Blade or Binding Blade because I never yeah. remember. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it's Blazing Blade, but I could be wrong. Um, but do you yeah. remember? Do you remember when we had this situation when? We were in Montreal and it was it was for Pixel 8 and you guys were driving us to the airport to drop us off. And we're driving to the airport and we start seeing the signs for the airport and the terminals and everything. And I said, I said, I always find it confusing that the signs say arrivals and departures <laughs> because it's like 
where am I going? I'm arriving, but which one should I? And and then you were like, yeah, they should come up with a better one. And then I immediately was like, pick up and drop off. It should just be pick up and drop off because that's what you're doing as the driver is picking up and dropping off. And it's like, it's people come with fucking confusing names sometimes. It's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? I'm departing the car into the airport. <laughs> I'm yes. arriving. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's one of those things that if you don't think about it, it's fine. When you think about it, you're overthink it and you're like, oh no, yeah. which one is it? Um, but I feel yeah. like, I feel like you're fine only because the stupidity has become ingrained. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stupid you're genetic stupidity. <laughs> um, cultural, genetic <laughs> cultural stupidity. <laughs> um, and do you want to talk about uh, Satisfactory? Uh, not really. Just to say we're very far. We are about to, we, we have the final two tiers available to us so we could theoretically finish the game. Now we just need to build up the, uh, aluminum that we've unlocked and all this stuff to get to it. Um, we got to trains, train trains are okay. I think they're, they're fun, but a lot of people say like, Hey, why use trains if you could just do conveyor belts? And I see what they're saying, but at least with trains, it's like a new mechanism to play with. Mm -hmm. And, um, I feel like we're we're at that point in all these survival games where you get to the end and you're like, okay, I understand how this game operates. I've done all these things a billion times. Now I just need to do it enough to finish the game. I, I will say though, have you looked at the recipe for aluminum ingots, Will? I haven't played in a couple days, so no. So the recipe, so most of the recipes in the game are put a mine like for iron ingot, right? It's put a miner on an iron ore. It gives you iron ore. Put that iron ore into a smelter, and it gives you an iron ingot. And then you can use that iron ingot to make stuff. So it's basically just like mine the ore, smelt it into the ingot. Fucking aluminum, all right? I'm going to get some of these steps wrong. But it's aluminum ore, and then it's aluminum ore plus water to turn into, like, aluminum s silica. And then, it's, and then it's aluminum silica plus silica to turn into aluminum scrap. And then you add water, and then it's aluminum scrap plus water again to turn into aluminum ore, and then it's aluminum ore plus copper ore to turn into an aluminum ingot. So it's it's confusing, but it is kind of a nice thing that Jesus. at the end, like like the last thing you're unlocking is basically aluminum, and they're like, fuck you, we're not going to make this easy. Like, this isn't the same as the others. So like this morning, I, I was telling Will and Zach, I had to like, they, they found an aluminum spot, and they put the train there and they started doing foundation. And so I went over there, I laid more foundation. And then I was like, what do I need? And it was like, you need water, you need power, you need coal, you need uh, aluminum or not aluminum or you need bauxite ore. And so I spent like an hour literally just going to other places on the map nearby, building what I needed to and having all that pipe and conveyor into the spot. So we haven't even started the aluminum production yet. But now we at least have all the weird different ingredients for it. So it, I, I do like that they added that complexity and challenge at the end when it feels like you're almost done, but they throw a curveball at you. I, I don't know, Will, how you how you like in Satisfactory? I'm liking it. I, I haven't played it in a couple of days. I was kind of giving it a break. I was going to play and then I felt like I was kind of forcing myself into playing it. And then I was like, let me wait and hold off. I think I was we were doing stuff and then I didn't play for a couple of days. So I missed like a tech jump. And then I and then I came back in and both of you and Zach had built like four or five factories and I was like, oh, I yeah. missed like I missed the couple hours of like getting factories up and running. And then I built one and then I felt a little bit better about it, but I just I haven't jumped back in. I built that train out to the thing because I really wanted to test the trains out and they're freaking sweat. Um, but yeah. other than that, uh, I haven't I haven't done anything. So I'm looking forward to diving back in tonight and, and getting that aluminum yeah. set up. Because I, I think it's I, I think we all kind of feel how you feel where it's like what I work on, I'm comfortable with and I feel like I've done. But every time I look over there, I'm like, whoa, what have you done? I've never messed with that before. So I, I don't don't worry about it because sure, I've built like 10 factories over the last week, but it was like an iron rod factory, a screw factory. It, it wasn't like I was building future tech. Mm. I was kind of just adding to the underlying materials we need. So I think once you hop back in. Yeah, uh, you'll, I should, you'll be right back in it. I, I also shouldn't degrade myself that much. I did build the entire fuel economy and the fuel generators. Yeah, you did do and that. And set yeah. all that up and made sure that uh, fluid dynamics and satisfactory makes me want to pull out a sword and stab it through myself several times. Of. 
Uh, I, I kind of like that it adds that complexity of you it have does, a pipe no, and it's, it's great. pumping fluid. You know, my solution is pump the maximum amount of fluid at all times, yes. and some of it will reach the end <laughs> and power the generators. Yeah. So uh, that's currently what's happening in Satisfactory. Um, do you want to talk about your weird sex game that's on here? Yeah, um, I. Uh, this was on my Steam wish. Excuse me, I'm getting emotional. This was on my Steam wish list, and uh, a couple of days, a couple of days ago, my Steam app on my phone was like, "Guess what? Space Docker VR is on sale." And I was like, "Okay, I, I kind of have a problem, which is I've I've put a lot of stuff on my Steam wish list. So the first thing I do when something goes on sale is I go look at it and I go, "Do I actually want this game?" Right? And I looked at it. It's I think it's been out for at least a year. Very positive. All these reviews are like. This game's really fun. It's challenging, but in a good way. These are the best controls I've ever played in a VR game, second to VTOL VR. And I was like, okay, okay. And then I and then I looked at the video and I remember what this is, which is it's a VR game, but basically you pilot a little tiny space tug and there are crates all over the level. And your job is to go and line up with the crate and you have this big docking nozzle right above your cockpit window and you have to connect to the dock port on the crate and then take it over to a ship and then undock it and that like does a a slow ejection and throws the crate into the thing um what makes it really fucking cool though what makes it great and honestly i jake i feel like you would appreciate this game is that uh trying to think of how to put this this like the apollo soyuz simulator this game's not for babies it's not for babies. Like literally as soon as you open it up, they're like, hey, here's all the assists. We recommend you turn them off for the best experience. But they're just <laughs> like like it's it's space. Right. So, for example, if you if you do a right thrust in space, you will keep fucking going that direction until mm -hmm. you stop by going left thrust. And there are plenty of games totally understandable that that will not use that realistic system. They'll use like airplane systems or they'll use like an inertial dampener. So you do right thrust and then you let it go and it'll slowly slow you down. And that's like some of the assists they have in this. And they have assists where it's like, hey, if there's a if there's a crate and it's moving when you're near the crate, it'll lock your speed to the grate. And I was like, fuck you. So I turned all the assists off. <laughs> Not many of them were on anyways, and they were like, if you want the true experience, turn the assist off. So I turn all the assists off and fuck me, folks, it's hard to fly a spaceship. So so basically <laughs> you're right. You're right. You basically have two joysticks, right? And you can you can do use the VR as the joysticks or you can actually do like HOTAS with a physical thing. But I prefer the VR one. Your right one is just like a just like a plain joystick. So it's pitch up, pitch down, roll left, roll right. And then you can. um I think you twist it to do yaw. So that's like a normal joystick. But then on the left hand side, it's all translational. So mm -hmm. so you you go left to, to, to thrust left, right to thrust right. Um, the thumbstick, I believe, is thrust up and thrust down. And then you push the joystick forward on the left as your throttle. You thrust forward and you thrust back. And it gets real fucking complicated real quick because, again, there's no inertial dampeners on it. So you're just like, you're just like, oh, I'm going to go over here. And you're like, oh, fuck, wait, why am I going fucking sideways? And I'm <laughs> and they have all these <laughs> dials and gauges, which are actually helpful. Like there's this big gauge that tells you your current speed. And so, like, you kind of want to keep that zero when you're stationary. But sometimes you're like, oh, fuck, I'm going too fast. And then they have like they have indicators that tell you like, yeah, your ship's pointed this way. But this indicator is telling you you're actually heading 90 degrees left. And you're just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then you and then you get to the crates. And if the crate's spinning, you can shoot these little jets at it that stick to the crate that will stop it at least from spinning. But it you still have to orient the fucking ship. And then as you get closer to it, you have this big panel that pops up above you at the top of your cockpit. And it's just below like where the top of your glass, you see the docking port. And it's uh, it's pitch, yaw and roll. And you have to be within a couple degrees pitch, yaw and roll of the docking port. And so you're like you're like slowly fucking creeping up to this docking port. And you're like, OK, I have to adjust my pitch, but I can't adjust it too far. And then you're like, oh, fuck, I hit the wrong thing. And all of a sudden you're fucking spinning and you're just like, shit, get it back. And it's fucking great. It is the best like it's the best spaceship experience I've ever felt because it's in VR, because the controls are so good and because it takes all the training wheels off. Like it's it's it feels like I'm a fucking space 
uh, longshoreman and it's it's great the difficulty of it because i jumped in today and i was i was doing okay like i fucked up a couple times but i was able to recover and like spin around and get into position i'm still not great at it but man like getting through that difficulty curve and like learning to to maneuver the ship feels fantastic yeah no that sounds delightful i'm trying to remember if hard space shipbreaker had any of those kind of hand holdy um because i feel like the the I think like it does. 3D maneuvering in that was pretty good. Not completely forgiving. Because um, yeah. you could definitely zip yourself off in the wrong direction if you weren't careful. Um, yeah. But no, I feel this like Hard Space, incredible. I think Hard Space had like a very small amount of inertial dampening. As in you let go and it would slow you down. But it, w- it would be very small. But the other thing is, I don't remember Hard Space having like the dual control scheme in terms of like no i guess it did it definitely you could had just... I, the thumbsticks would orient you one way and i know that the triggers would then move you like in Up, another down, dimension forward back yeah so i guess it did have that so and honestly the aesthetic is similar to it as well it's not as good as heart space but like has a little bit of that cartoony space feel um it just feels really really good because the whole game also takes place within the cockpit so you're like level select and it'll like pop out this little you know screen like drops down from the side and it's like press the button for the level we it's just a fucking diegetic ui yeah it's just a fucking vr games i don't mean to go on a rant here but like vr the problem is no longer hardware the hardware is fucking fantastic and it's cheap as shit like i saw the request twos brand new on sale this week from best buy for a hundred dollars and it's like the hardware's good and it's cheap as fuck right now. The problem is that people are not making good fucking games because there are plenty of games like Space Dock or VR, but it's like you sit in it and the UI is not diegetic or it doesn't feel as good or they're putting so many fucking training wheels on it or there's not enough gameplay depth or mechanics for you to actually go through. Whereas this game is like, no, we're going to put you here. We're going to take the training wheels off. We're going to have it all in VR. So you're constantly looking around and interacting with menus and screens. And we're going to have time trials. We're going to have a bunch of different levels. We're going to have racing. We're going to have weekly challenges and all this shit. And it's just like, that's that's the way to do it. We need people to make good VR games now because the hardware's fucking there, folks. It's there. Agreed. It's Ian's uh, campaign platform. Good VR games now. Yeah. GVRN. <laughs> yeah, vote vote with your wallets, folks. Uh, and by sending your money directly to us. Uh, <clears throat> that sounds like fun. I do want to check that out. Uh, I've, I've been meaning to set up the VR again so I can play Half-Life Alex uh, and other VR games that I have on my Steam account that I've never touched. So maybe I'll do that soon. Um, games I have played this week. Um, folks, I played and completed... Assassin's Creed 2007's hit game from Ubisoft um, it is uh, for all of you out there who don't know what Assassin's Creed is read a fucking book um, it is a video game where you play an assassin <laughs> I'm sorry but but read a fucking book it is a video game <laughs> it's history actually um, Assassin's Creed 1 oh uh takes place in the middle ages i so all of this to say as i have started playing assassin's creed 2 as well uh, after beating assassin's creed 1 and folks it is absolutely insane how much better of a video game assassin's creed 2 is than assassin's creed uh, 1 i have a lot of I've nostalgia heard. for yeah. assassin's creed 1 but compared to 2 they are almost completely different games like like one is a tech demo for what they wanted to do in two. Um, <clears throat> one just has a lot of repetitious stuff. I ended up, you're, you're also, so in one year, the assassin Altair, uh, you were, it's during the crusades in the Holy land. You, there's Damascus, Jerusalem, Akko, Acre, and, um, something else, uh, which was neat. Cause I have been recently to both Jerusalem and Akko. So it was cool to like compare those and like see some of the sites and everything. But they're very bare bones. Every time you go to a city, you go to the Assassin's Bureau, you have to do six investi- or three minimum, six maximum investigations. And it plays a little more like Hitman than I remember because you like get these investigations and like you have to manually go look at the memory log and see like where the 
the guards mm. are and everything and it's it's weird it's almost like an old pc game vibe where it's just like not giving you all the information out front with objectives and everything which again it's from 2007 but um yeah that game just like it just goes and and ends and things happen and you're just kind of like it doesn't play that well i also came to learn that the like rooftop travel and stuff in one wasn't meant really to be there you because the game's sort of designed around this way that you're blending into crowds you're walking with yeah. people and everything and they don't the climbing and and the other stuff was secondary which is weird because it was very heavily featured in the marketing now moving on for assassin's creed uh one i give it a solid seven six and a half seven assassin's creed two major game changer um cities with tons of rooftops uh uh I believe the quote is that they wanted to make like rooftop highways, parkour highways in these cities. Uh, climbing feels a heck of a lot better. It's not as stilted as it was in one. You can blend in with crowds easily. You don't constantly get guards on you all the time. They added a notoriety system in every single city. They added the, the big, uh, uh, mansion that your uncle Mario owns. It's a Mia Mario is a line he says in the game. Um, and you can upgrade the whole city. You get income every 20 minutes in the game. And then when the like income box fills up, you can go grab it. You have all these codecs. It is, it is the equivalent of a modern collectathon game but without all the microtransaction bullshit and not 50 million things to collect, like an appropriate amount of things and cool story vibes and cool dungeons. Um, I have played Assassin's Creed 2 when it came out and I like really didn't remember any of this. Um, I forgot uh, there's like a crazy code thing that Subject 16 like injected into the Animus and you're like finding all these secret symbols that reveal the the truth video that you can see mm -hmm. pictures of uh it's it's got like such weird conspiracy vibes that i forgot about um so i'm i'm genuinely really liking it i'm playing the Ezio collection on the xbox series x it's an xbox one release uh i might I, i'm getting ahead of myself i might check out brotherhood and revelations that are both on there as well uh but for right now playing through two it it's 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 funny, I had an itch to play Assassin's Creed, and I said, I'm gonna play one, and then two is what I had the itch for. It is it is an excellent, excellent video game, uh, and I'm having a blast with it. Jake, you have a question. When does the series get woke? <laughs> um, I think that's, Sin that's Syndicate, right? That's the first female that you can play as? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, it, it got woke for... I mean, I, it's crazy. This game is, like, all about, like like religion isn't real jesus isn't real like they all used pieces of eden to control the world and everything um so it's 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 secretly woke but now it's <laughs> hell divers woke and are not, and it's cool um yeah i don't i i never played three i played four and karen was asking me black flag yeah, four's Black Flag, and she was like, "Oh, did four have all the Abstergo and the like secrecy stuff?" And I was like, "The only thing I remember about four and the Abstergo is you're a video game designer at that company, and that's what four is the video game that the company's designing." Yes, and I don't remember like, any of the conspiracy like, uh, shit in that. Resurrection. Yeah, but also the main character of four, Edward Applebottom, whatever his name is isn't an actual assassin he just found an assassin's suit uh, uh -huh. and like put it on so i i'm excited to get back to four uh because it's really good like the santa um, claus you just have to wear the suit, yeah, you just have the to wear the suit. um but it's, so yeah just to say assassin's creed 2 still a fantastic video game in 2024 14 years later uh it looks pretty good uh, the only problem with it really is some of the models are noticeably low res or like have weird angular eyes like like um they're opened too much like there's a triangle at the top and it like digs into the eyeball and i'm almost like i wonder if like early hd and crts kind of muddied that which is why they did it um it like looks weird uh you see i have a shockingly awful photo of uh What's this Ezio's brother who died?
dies in like the first 15 minutes of that game spoiler um with just like f eyeballs outside his head like almost looks like but um it's great fantastic game and i heard they are supposedly remastering one in four uh that is like the rumor mill uh something like that so yeah yeah assassin's creed one and two don't play one play two one is it's only nostalgia that's bringing you back to it it's it's rough it two still has the thing though where like occasionally etsy will just jump in the middle of nowhere for no reason you're like dude uh -huh. i just spent like five minutes climbing up this thing you're just gonna jump off and like, what's the what's the jump button a is it i so i have an xbox controller where the a button intermittently does not work right so, so I, I wonder if I, it's your controller i do double a sometimes but it's not that it's it's i think it's the joystick because i'm pushing forward but some i think my joystick uh -huh. tends to think i'm i'm going this way a little bit more to the right than actual up so he'll like quick pivot and jump that way when the thing isn't oh, quite in okay. front of him it's to the left so i think i'm holding it trying to hold it straight and he's jumping to the right but it's still just like like i want to jump off this boat and you're just jumping into the water instead of the dock and at least in this game you can swim so it's okay but in one you couldn't swim and you just had to keep re reloading the level uh <laughs> and the final thing i'll say is loading times are great in both assassin's creed one the uh helpful robot lady could not get through half of the tip before it finished loading uh she was like starting to say something and then in mm -hmm. two uh i like have just enough time to read the the tip also another funny thing i learned is in one and two and subsequent ones i'm like why are there ladders everywhere like other than yes i have to get to the roofs uh, these roofs and those ladders and stuff but the little helpful robot lady told me i never realized this especially in one ladders are in uh are socially acceptable ways of reaching the roof so you don't have people like questioning oh. what you're doing and i'm like I'm so stupid That's to cool. never have thought of that, and it's like really neat well, uh, that they they think of that. But it's like it's like it's like real world logic that you would normally just reject and would yeah. not consider in a video game. Because in one and two, uh, more so in one, when you climb the side of a building, people are like, if he gets hurt, I'm not helping him. Like, wh what is this guy uh -huh. doing? And I, I always found that like immersion breaking, but it makes sense. So it, it's just funny. Um, other than that, I've been playing uh, more uh, mini motorways. I don't know if either of you have ever played this game. It's from the sub yeah. subway. Whatever. They made a subway game as well. But you're basically, uh, ha you have a map. It's a grid. You have a number of road tiles. You can get bridges, motorways, roundabouts, traffic lights. A shopping center opens and then houses open of one color. You connect those together and you complete trips. Uh, slowly as the level continues it zooms out uh, more houses of different colors spawn more more shopping centers and you have to connect them all up and it ends up in this craziness of being like uh, try to get all the uh, all the cars to drive um, what year is this from through this uh, it's a couple of years old 2025 2025 2021 how did I not know that dinosaur polo club made another transport game oh I, I love know. mini metro Mini Metro, Mini Metro that's what it's called. Yeah, I, I love this game. I've been watching the... I forget his... You, Karen watched him. He's the real civil engineer, I think. And he played it a lot. Um, it is, oh, yeah. Ian, you would love this game because it is a game of segregation. You do not combine the colors. Um, yes. Because... <laughs> Every all the trips complete themselves <laughs> way faster if you separate out all the colors, and that's literally yeah. a joke from that YouTuber. He's like, he's like, I I don't like this, but it, the game works better if you don't combine the colors, <laughs> um, which they force you yeah, to sometimes I'm with double the shopping heck out of this. Oh, Jake, if you don't know about this game, you're gonna love it. Uh, it is fantastic. Um, if you need any pointers, let me know because it's a very fun game. Mini motorways. I have the cheat code now. You've you've already told me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't. Uh, there's also Profiling. another trick that I I'm too lazy to do, but you basically use all of your extra row tiles to cover up tiles so things don't spawn, and you can like end up getting. Uh, you can just control where things spawn and get a higher score. But it's fun. Uh, they're, they're each level uh, are different cities. So I I just did uh, Rio de Janeiro, I think. 
and they have like some of them have mountains, some have rivers, uh, and, and cool things like that. It's a very fun game, and it's perfect to play on the couch when you're watching old giant bomb content. Uh, full Sorry, circle. I also got distracted. I went. I I was looking at images from the 2009 Raven Software Wolfenstein, and BJ Blazkowicz looks like Mark Wahlberg's Max Payne. <laughs> Oh, wow. That it's a like very a weird character design. <laughs> 10 levels. That is, Can you put that a picture is around in the 2009, Discord? yeah. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Fuck, I remember that Max this. Payne movie? So bad. I didn't even know I've that. Oh, oh remember that Hit, Hitman oh, movie? Theaters. Yeah, the Timothy Timothy Oliphant. Oliphant Hitman movie? I always movie? see like a, a. I always get like a. I don't know why I always see a poster for it on like uh, streaming services, but he just blatantly looks like a man with a bald cap on. Mm -hmm. Every time yeah. I see it, and I'm just like, who thought this was a good idea? Well, that's that the twist at the end is, is he takes it off. <laughs> no, it isn't. No, it isn't. That was the final disguise. <laughs> yeah, they, you hear a boop, and then he takes it off because they scanned him, <laughs> sold the bald cap. <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. I should play that again. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. Uh, time to move into the news section with the news master. We've got Jake Terrio, the newsmaster. He collects all the news. Uh, he does. This, he puts these funny titles in. He does it. It's crazy. It's Ian, actually. Ian does it. I just hate him. Ha! Oh, so. Thank you for the uh, the happy, <laughs> lovely intro because we got to get the sad news out of the way right away. We've got more layoffs to report. First up, Just Cause developer Avalanche is closing two of their studios and laying off about fifty workers and behavior is going to lay off up to 95 employees. That brings the 2024 games industry layoff totals to 10,200, which by my count is within 300 of the 2023 year end totals. That's crazy. And we're, we're Mrs. not Month even halfway six. through the year. Yeah. Uh, it's bad Damn. out there, folks. Uh, if you've record. been laid off. I'm sorry to hear that, and you should probably change industries because games industry is not in a good state right now. Uh, any any parting thoughts for for f the fresh layoff victims? I mean, now we're definitely not ever going to get that second Mad Max game, or Just Cause yeah. Five. Oh, we could get a Just. I feel like Just Cause does numbers for them, though. <laughs> what else are they yeah, going to make? True. You know, what did Behavior do? <laughs> They oh, spelled it wrong. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've definitely played stuff from Behavior. Hold on. Uh, I know. I, it's going to hit me like daylight. a ton of bricks. Okay, thank you. Dead by Daylight. I knew I, so I maybe they just tried to remember. So, I'm sorry, that was yeah, your maker. It's a bad joke. Unfortunately, their game is successful, so they did not deserve it. But, uh... <laughs> don't don't start down this. Don't light your train fire, sir. Um, anyways, uh, look, I'm, I'm just upset that they fucked up KSP two so much, and then there's just no hope uh, of that being turned around. But anyways, uh, let's move on to the E3 2024. It, it we are officially in E3 2024 after Sony gave their press conference last week. We've got a whole bunch of stuff coming. We've got Summer Games Fest, Summer Game Fest singular uh tomorrow and we've got xbox on sunday Only one game no i i think that's actually what i think it is summer game fest it's not summer games because no but i love time... the idea of keely walking out and it's there's just one the game that he's showcasing the summer game <laughs> seasons matter idiot. uh anyways um so we we've got some rumors here that we should go through. So uh, first up, I'll rip through all of these. There's a rumor that Microsoft is going to remaster Halo Combat Evolved and mm -hmm. then release it on the PS5 along with the Xbox and PC. Uh, there's also a rumor that Microsoft will debut a handheld Xbox hardware at its game showcase this Sunday. And then there is more reports, but this one is basically, uh, I, I would consider one of the first reliable reports that there is a lego horizon adventures game coming from playstation um and they have some details here they think it's going to be uh announced tomorrow not tomorrow 8th of june so probably at summer games fest oh they're saying 8th of june because summer game fest is 8th of june in ants 
which this article comes from. Yeah, so Lego Horizon Adventures, a Lego Horizon game. Any of these rumors uh, tickle your pickle? I mean... Will? (laughs) I was just going to say, you know, I would take... You know, it's been 23 years. I would take a Halo Combat Evolved remake. Or rem- I, I guess remaster. How is this different? How is this different from yeah, the Master Chief Collection? Chief Collection. Uh, yeah, no, no. Sorry, I, I thought it was uh, in my head. I had remake, not remaster. Like if you're just gonna reskin the game and make it look beautiful, sure, fine, they whatever. Did that. Yeah. But I, I was thinking more a remake uh, and adding, like, like just uh, uh, basically a retelling of Halo Combat Evolved in the TV continuity. In the TV continuity. No, but more in the sense of like how they, uh, I was, uh, you know, I, I can't quite, you know, no, no, I, I kind of see where you're going. <laughs> like, like, I don't think it needs to, but what if, what if they did a full, what if they did a I, Final Fantasy VII remake yeah, of the Halo? Or like Dead Space. Halo Combat Evolved. Here's like, if they, I'd be no, no. Okay, they we do a dramatic it. remake. Dead, Dead Space. Dead Space is not that changed. Final Fantasy VII remake is drastically different. I know, different but Dead Space is enough changed. Not really. I think you didn't even play the original. This would be like the nuclear option for gamer discourse because if they did like a ground up rebuild of Halo CE and put it on PlayStation, the 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 neckbeards would be foaming at the mouth. Fuck the neckbeards for weeks or don't. But it's a smart it's a smart business decision because you have a whole bunch of PlayStation gamers who have who may have never played Halo. Or have not played Halo since Xbox or 360 because since then they've they've switched consoles on the gens, and it all of a sudden you've got this property that is in dormancy. Like Master Chief Collection's great, but you're not making money on that. Halo Infinite, you're sure as fuck not making money on that. You're actually like kind of ruining your image a little bit with the IP. Why not just give it to the people that have never had it before, a known good quantity? So I, I think this is. I think this is a smart decision. It's probably it's probably not for us because we've played it. This is more like, hey, it's going to be cheap and easy for us to do this. Let's throw a bone to the Sony fans and make some money yeah. over there. Yeah, the when Sony, I, as I've seen called. When I first yeah. heard this, like my mind, the way I thought about it, and I realized I'm not correct. I don't think I'm correct in this, but it was almost like give the same movie idea to five directors. Like I just wanted to see Halo Combat Evolve, like remade in yeah. like like Kojima style, or like you know someone else. Like take all this. Like you can't change the story or something like that, but like remaster the levels do your own spin on on the level design like add all sorts of cool stuff like that sort of yeah. uh remaster but or uh remake but yeah yeah i i like i like your idea i i i don't think that's what they're doing here and i don't think they need to but i i still would really yeah. like your idea yeah it'd be like, cool yeah it's, it's um uh, jake do you give two shits about lego horizon adventure I need to see it. I feel like like it doesn't from just hearing those words put together. I don't necessarily get it. Um, but certainly if if like, you know, how much gameplay do they take from Horizon and how much do they take like from the traditional Lego style? Because um, there is somewhat of a like the like dismantling like p- pulling off armor parts from the monsters to expose weak points i can sort of see that working in like a lego vibe but i i don't know i have to see it in mm-hmm. action yeah and that that's kind of the rumor is that it's an open world action game that it's basically very similar to horizon but in the lego style which i don't know why but the fact that it's in the lego style and not that ugly ass westernized horizon style is like immediately more appealing to me than every time i look at that fucking game and see those ugly people in it (laughs) i will be very disappointed though if it's well i mean i'm going to be very disappointed because i know they're not going to do this but i ever since lego worlds i've just always been frustrated when they make these lego games that are just lego things in yeah. a real environment. Yes. I want it to be all Lego. Yes, 100%. 100%. Well, Lego uh, Fortnite kind of does that or no? Yeah. Oh, the terrain, the terrain was not 
The oh, train no. was not Lego. I don't think I the train was Lego. Out. You could I, 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 mean, I got to check the footage. I'm just excited for them to make a good Horizon game for once. Um, then games are good. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I know they're good. I, I just couldn't get into them. And I think I could someday, but I won't because I don't I, want I to. think they're solid sevens. That's my understanding, Halo, having played them a little Fortnite. bit. Solid sevens. Do you think... Oh, no, yeah, right. Yeah, the landscape in LEGO Fortnite is not made out of LEGO. Someone already made this joke, and I'm pretty sure it was one of you two, but um, the LEGO Zelda game that comes out the same day... It's going to be way better. Sorry, the Mega Bloks <laughs> Zelda game that comes out the same day is going to yeah. be awesome. <laughs> oh, God. I, but now I you know Lego really... has the Zelda license. It's just true. like they have the Horizon yeah. license. And they picked a I, terrible is... first model. <laughs> yeah. I am genuinely excited, though, because it happened with Zelda Breath of the Wild. It happened with Elden Ring. I don't think it's a funny coincidence. I think... I think Horizon has accidentally put themselves on the same dev cycle as open world games. And the problem is they keep making a fucking mediocre game. <laughs> so it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, when the third Horizon game comes out, there probably will be another fantastic open world game that comes out yep. near it because the studios are working at the same time. You know, I think if Horizon games came out in tandem with Assassin's Creed games, they would have won out more. Yeah. Instead of yeah, duking it out with the uh, with yeah, I feel like oil. Assassin's Creed would have less. I think it, Assassin's Creed would be in the Horizon situation in that scenario. Yeah. I think those two, game, two games are a lot closer, but I, I part of me says Horizon would eke that out because it's different. And, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's funny how much timing matters because if you remember Titanfall two, uh, pancaked on launch. Yeah, and it's and it's because Titanfall Two, published by EA, they also decided to publish. I think it was Battlefield One at like it, within the same fucking month, and it was like, what are you idiots doing? And then Call of Duty was like in that month or the month after the month before, so it was like shooting themselves in the foot, just picking a very bad date for what ended up being the best game out of those three that year. We we talked about it a couple weeks ago, but Mad Max game came out the same day as metal gear solid 5 like what yeah. a terrible terrible decision you have made uh, and apparently yeah. they tried yeah. to delay it and the the publisher wouldn't let them it's like what do you think wb yeah pre zaslav too who knows who was in charge yeah um, his father this microsoft are you guys interested at all in a handheld xbox hardware no for the same reason i wasn't interested in the playstation one well, actually, I yeah. would be interested, you know, I I would be more interested in the Xbox version of that PlayStation Portal. Is that what it was called? Yes. Yes. But remember, PlayStation Portal is it, the games do not run on the device. You are just streaming it from your PS5. Right. And, and the only situation I would enjoy that is sometimes I want to keep playing an Xbox game when Karen wants to watch a TV show or something. And I would like to sit six feet away from the Xbox Series X and yeah. play on an on a wireless screen. Like that is the only like I wouldn't do that with a PS5, but that's the only situation I would use that device. Yeah. So in my head, I think there's two paths. There's two possibilities here. One is it's like a PS Portal. It's a cloud streaming device, but I think it is already better than the PlayStation Portal as long as they make it so that it streams from X Cloud and not from your specific console because that's what the PlayStation portal is. It has to stream from your console, which sucked. Um, whereas Microsoft already has the X cloud. Uh, and then the second thing is it's already better because the game pass library is better. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the game pass library is, is X cloud compatible. So if they built the same thing as the PS portal, I think it's already better, but not, uh, but not a solid case to buy. Yeah. However, if they build, uh, I'll just call it, you know, PSP, because that's probably the closest equivalent we have right now, which is basically actually I wouldn't I would call it I would call it the Steam Deck. It will play all the same games as an Xbox Series S. It will stream from the X Cloud if you want to, or it will play them locally. But you have a handheld experience that you can take with you. You know, you come in at the right price point and the right har hardware and software there. If you had a portable fucking Xbox Series S with the Game Pass library, that's pretty fucking big right there. 
right? Yeah. Because think about how many fucking Game Pass games there are. And that'd be that would run like like an uh, uh, like a Xbox One and 360 Game Pass game pretty flawlessly. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. And and probably it'd be a 1080p screen or something like that, so it'd probably perform totally fine at Series S because Series S is doing up to 1440. Yeah. So it, no, it, I'm on board. My only. Yeah, my only concern, this is my biggest fucking concern, and my problem is I think it will be true. It will probably run fucking Windows. And Windows is not a fucking tablet or handheld OS. It's not. I've I've had Windows on a tablet-like device. It doesn't fucking work. They have not done enough to the UI and UX where you can easily manipulate it with your fingies, where you have like quick power cycles, sleep, rest mode, etc. It just yep. feels like you have a fucking desktop machine with all the power constraints and the mouse and keyboard demands that you're being forced to use fingies on. And that's the number one fucking problem with all these Microsoft, uh, all these Windows handhelds that keep coming out that are three, four times more powerful than the Steam Deck, but they don't work as well because they're running fucking Windows. And that's my concern is that this is going to be a Windows handheld. Worst part about the Microsoft Surface we own is that it is on Windows. Yeah. So that's my concern. They should not make that mistake. But with the amount of fucking Windows linkups they keep doing with Asus and Zen and Zotac and giving them handheld support via Windows, I'm concerned that they're going to make it a Windows device, which would suck. So we'll see. Yeah. Kyle mentioned uh, in the chat it. that... Um, sorry, Digital Foundry talked about a bespoke version of the Xbox OS being on that handheld. I could, I could see that. It's a possibility, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm saying it's, it's a total possibility. My biggest worry is they're going to put Windows on it, which is what they're throwing on all the other handhelds right now. Yeah. That's a big fucking problem. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about the fucked up corner. We got two big things here. Number one, I don't... Have you guys heard this story? I mean, I about, read it when I saw it in the list, and it's crazy. Yeah, so um, look, game cloning is a problem in this industry, and it's not new in this industry, but it typically does not happen as personally as it does in this story, which is essentially that uh, this is from PC Gamer. Uh, Kinda Nice, who's a uh, an indie game creator, created a game called Dire Decks. They put it on itch.io. And it was pretty popular. People liked it. Uh, another developer got in touch with them, one Terry Brash, who's another indie game developer, and said, hey, I like your game, Dire Decks. Here's some games I've met, I've made. And they became Discord friends, and they exchanged messages. And then a year later, Terry Brash sent a message to Kinda Nice, the creator of, of uh, Dire Decks, and said, hey, I made this game called Wildcard, it's a clone of your game. Isn't it cool? And then just l deliberately <laughs> bragged about how they had cloned the entire game. And they said, it's OK, because I didn't use your artwork. I redrew it and clones <laughs> and and it happens all the time. Um, quote, I'm confused. What's weird here? I like the game. So I made a clone with extra stuff. Happens every day, homie. And then they put it on sale on Steam. So long story short, Terry Brash is a really fucking awful indie game developer. You should not buy anything from him or any <laughs> game called Wildcard. And there may be pending legal matters here. And uh, if you ever or see a game called Dire Dex come out. Spotlight. Yeah, reverse wishlist. If you ever see Dire Dex come out, that's the real game. That's the one you should uh, you should wishlist. This is there's cloning. And then there's just the like the the how brash terry brash has been in literally yeah. being like hey i cloned your game isn't that cool it's a for sale on steam now isn't that cool and it's, it's not like, like no, fuck you it's not like hey i wanted to practice my game dev skills i made your game isn't this like this is a fun like can you check it out and let me know what you think like this is cool um versus like i was gonna say the most probably prolific recent years is of this situation is vampire survivors and that yeah. guy copied the game mechanic uh, of a game he really loved and completely changed everything else that's like if his game yeah. was named the same thing and used the same art and and like it's just same ui and everything like that is a good Wild. example of people copying other people if you want to use the term copying like this is just stealing <laughs> it's like yep. absolutely wild um yeah Jesus. uh 
A second entry in the fucked up corner is the uh, the Verge has reported on a huge uh, problem within Google, which is essentially Google employees accessing private videos on YouTube. These are videos that have been posted but not gone public yet, as well as private drive accounts, etc., to gain information early. Uh, one of the the most uh, infamous examples of this, I believe, this happened last year, was a popular YouTuber who posted a video and in the video they were going to periodically give out gift card codes. And as soon as the video went live, they realized all the gift card codes had already been claimed. And it's because somebody had watched the video, even Whoa. though it was completely private to their account, etc. Um, and, and Google said, oh, we took care of this. It was an isolated incident and there was not it was an accident. And it was it was it was like ten thousand dollars worth of gift cards. So anyways, um, this article, though, how it ties into gaming is uh, insider gaming. Tom Henderson talks about some of the experiences that he's had with people watching YouTube gaming press conferences early. Uh, so, for example, he says, quote, Sony's recent state of play was a big eye opener for me. And the most recent example I can give about how widespread this new YouTube leak culture is within around 18 hours of the state of play video being scheduled on YouTube. I had four different individuals send me the complete game list, which means these are individuals who saw the video scheduled on YouTube that was not made public yet. So this is um, this is a bit of a fucked up thing, but it's also a big PSA, which is. Careful what you post on your YouTube, your Google Drive, all that sort of shit, because not only is Google actively looking at it, but there's also instances recently them of just randomly deleting terabytes of data from Google accounts, which has impacted companies and individuals. So Google, your shit on Google is not private. So be careful. I got to delete some things. <laughs> got some dancing videos. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Wild. Uh, that's enough for the fucked up corner. Let's finish it out with some two tiny bits of tainment news. There is a Tomb Raider animated show releasing on Netflix on October 10th, and a Like a Dragon Yakuza live action series has been announced for Amazon Prime Video. You guys excited about these? Um, uh, I'm double checking. Is Tomb Raider, is it animated by Powerhouse or? Uh, it kind of, it, it's Powerhouse style. I couldn't I'll remember if they were uh, the PR, like Isn't in the there PR animated thing. Oh no, there wasn't. I'm thinking of they announced a new Wallace and Gromit movie today, and I'm very excited about that. Oh yeah, so uh, in the, in the, uh, I was thinking of rewatching the animated studios. Yeah, I'll watch yeah. this. I like Powerhouse. They do good stuff. I need to watch more of Castlevania. Like... They did Castlevania, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the last two seasons season I'm missing. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Um, like a dragon. It's funny that I made this happen and I'll tell you why, because earlier this week I saw on Twitter, somebody was posting gifts and it reminded me that there is already a Yakuza live action movie from like the late 2000s that got made in Japan. And it's it's almost comedic. And I was like, oh, I should watch that. And I added it to my watch list. And then two days later, they announced that they're making Whoa. a Like a Dragon Yakuza live action series. Quick pre -pro. Um I'm, I'm actually excited for this because I've talked about this before. Yakuza games are very story heavy, which is great. It, but it gets to a point where I would rather just watch that as a TV show instead of 20 minutes of cutscenes and then some gameplay and then 20 minutes of cutscenes and it's like a 40 hour game. This is not again, not anything against the game, but I would I love those cutscenes so much that I was almost like, I don't want to play a game. I just want to keep watching this, you know, and so this could be very good. The Yakuza stories are fantastic. And if they capture even just a little bit of the the comedy and and the emotion and the heart of that series, this will be very good. I like Yakuza. I think it would make a good, good TV show. So Demolishing a local businessman with an orbital laser. Yeah. yeah. Throwing crabs at people. I believe I believe this is going to be Yakuza Zero. It's set in two time periods, 1995 and 2005. Repercussions of decisions. Pre and post 11. So it's not clear, but I think it I think it may be zero. I would like to play another Yakuza game, 
but I would like more to just play Yakuza Zero again. That game is perfect. I mean, honestly, everything after Zero, as in made after Zero, yeah, not necessarily cr- not necessarily chronologically after Zero, is just as good and and really good. And you, sh- you should maybe try maybe try like a Dragon series. I, I need to try Seven because Chris uh, talked about Seven a lot, and he really said I would like it. So I need to I need to do Seven. It's good. But I'll get there someday. I did just uh, Game Pass news. They added Octopath Traveler two and one. But I've been wanting to play two for a while, and I've been uh, ooh, almost said the wrong word. I've been on the edge, on the fence of. Ooh, ooh! Yeah, I almost said fencing. Uh, I'm on the fence about buying it, uh, and uh, and they just put it on Game Pass, and they explicitly said it's on Game Pass until 2025 or 2026, something like that. They're like, yeah. Uh, so I was like, okay, got Years. plenty of time. So I think after, I want to say I'm going to play Assassin's Creed 3 after 2, but probably not. Uh, I'll probably play Octopath Traveler 2. Uh, I didn't play 1, but they said just to play 2. So I'm going to do that. Don't yell at me. Okay, you guys ready to, you ready to wrap it up? Yeah. Awesome, because I really have to go to the bathroom. Here we go folks thank you so much for tuning in this week i have been your host will crosby joining me this week was the lovely jake terry and the wonderful and fantastic ian gibson uh we will be back uh saturday officially saturday at 1 p.m eastern kyle and uh jason will be there to play some more fired emblem we are almost done it's probably going to be the last episode and by last episode i mean the first of the last 10 episodes so get excited for that get in the comments about that um we uh i might be streaming some unemployment enjoyment tomorrow around 1 p.m some more XCOM. we lost a lot of good soldiers but we have rebuilt karen for the fourth time and she's a robot now so uh hopefully she'll be okay maybe we'll bring back robot ian as well uh but jake and kyle really pulled their weight in that last mission kyle has the worst luck of any XCOM soldier i've ever had in my entire life but i still love you and i haven't court-martialed you and executed you bye uh, E3 coverage is in E3 Discord. E3 coverage in the chat. Uh, Discord. <laughs> uh.